Welcome to Conversations, Cocktails, and Connections. I'm Emily Reeves. I am Amy Hester. Are you ready for a drink? Always. We are going to make a traditional mint julep tonight. Surprisingly, we actually haven't made this. We've made versions, yeah, but not like a full-on traditional mint julep. What Do you remember what the version we did? Well, so we did... Um, like a mint jewel from that okay. fancy AF cocktail book. Yes. Which is up there. And um, it remember it had like powdered sugar on the top. Like it was really good. We really, really liked it. So, I mean, it's sure. pretty, it's pretty similar. Yeah. Um, so uh, we're going to, we we got our mom's old julep cups nice. out. The pewter julep cups. I've already put our mint leaves in there. So okay. it's four to five mint leaves per cup. And um, then we're going to add some simple syrup, syrup, do some muddling. Syrup. syrup. <laughs> and then add the bourbon and um, ice and okay. garnish with cement. Okay. So I love it. That is what we're doing. So, so I'm going to get us started. What um, prompted the mint julep today? Well, so our guest, you know, we ask our guests what their favorite drinks are or what alcohols they like or don't like. Mm-hmm. And um, she mentioned the mint julep as one of her yes. favorites. So she sometimes says, we, we do ask. It doesn't mean that it's always going to be yeah. what they ask for. But um, if we get the questionnaire in a little early enough in time, we can do it. But do otherwise, we make work. what? Yeah. We make what we got. So tell us about our guest. Oh, my gosh. She, right? She's an author. Yes. So Emily so Emily Roberson. Roberson. Um, local she, author. Yeah, local author. She's originally from, I think, wasn't she from, like, North Little Rock or something? Or oh, I may have this completely wrong. I'm stumped. Yeah. But I know... That it wasn't in Little Rock, and she went to high school in Little Rock. Jacksonville. Jacksonville, yes. But she went to high school here. Yeah. She was from mm-hmm. Jacksonville. That's yeah. right. I love it. We, so we had lunch has, with her she a has, few weeks um, ago. She has ties to both sides of the river. That's right. Yeah, That's we had lunch. Right. We had a nice lunch, nice visit. It's um, She's actually writing a book currently, and she wanted to visit with us about um, friends that podcast together. So oh, yeah. in her book, in her next book, I think that they have... You know, there's friends that are podcasting. Yeah, so it'll be fun wanted, to yeah. visit with her today about See if that. she's gotten anything written since we saw her last. I uh, know. Has any additional questions? Her characters are Amy and Emily. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so we're looking forward to visiting with Emily. And her, um, her son goes to school with my stepdaughter. So, um, so I've run into her over the years. We actually met her at a cocktail yes, class at Eggshells. We totally did. I wanted to point that out we did meet her at a cocktail just sitting at our table see people you can meet other people at these kind of functions right don't remind me (laughs) um we're gonna need to replenish our bourbon so what all is in this so bourbon so it's mint simple syrup and bourbon okay that's it that's it it's pretty simple and then we're gonna add ice and i mean i'll say it again Mint always makes every drink, I think, taste that much like, more fresh, you know? Yes. Gosh, I almost, I, was, I went to the liquor store to get some wine before I came. Man, I, I might like, have to make it a double. Look at oh, that. yeah. <laughs> My goodness. Do we have enough bourbon to do a double? We, let's see how much bourbon we have. Maybe not, we, we have other brands. Yeah, we do. So let me do like another half ounce. Let's just see how much we have because I don't want to. Not have enough, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is how we do Baby it. Steps. This is how, how we do it. it. Oh my gosh! I know this. That was not R. Kelly, but holy hell, R. I Kelly know. got in trouble. Someone. He's going to jail. No, he's going to prison for a long time. Good. He's gross. Okay. <laughs> you think he's fine? So that means I need, so I did basically, like, you did too many pours for me to keep up. I wasn't paying attention to that. I know. Sorry. Just have to do the best we can here. Yeah. I don't know. We'll make, we'll make hers a little, a little dabble bit. dabble do, yeah. We'll make hers perfectly fine. Awesome. How are we doing on time, Ems? We are good. I was just noticing my watch because. Did you get a new one? No, no, they haven't. They're not available yet. It's so funny. I, I know, I know. Emily will tell me when the watch is available. I know she does this, but can I tell you how many people are like? Oh no, I saw him at Costco, or I saw. No, and I was like, oh my god, I'm sure you didn't, but oh my god, that's or I hilarious. saw him at. So I'm gonna put these little copper straws Sam's. in here. 
Or yeah, they don't literally. They literally don't know what they're doing. Okay. I what did, they're talking about. They don't know what they're talking about. I did see a new feature on the new phone that sounded kind of cool because um, I didn't think I wanted one. And then somebody tells me something new. Cheers. Have you seen the feature where they take? You can take a picture of a of a of written handwriting and it. It's on the new software. You can do it on your current phone <gasps> if you update your software. Well, holy hell! <laughs> well, cheers, my love. <laughs> I feel like I need to talk like a southern lady. It's strong. Well, hell. Woo. Okay, I have to tell you something. A client yesterday, I've been saying this over and over because I thought this was great. It was a, it's a very southern saying, and she said, well, he was as country as a brown egg. Oh, no, that's funny. I literally about pee my pants. I was like, that is so funny. She goes, well, now everybody, she goes, now every hipster has chickens, so I guess it's not that country. <laughs> It's like, no, but it sounds great. That's funny. All right, well, let's clean up and visit with Emily. Cheers. Cheers. Welcome, Emily. Thank you for coming. We're so glad to be here. I know. We we met Emily making cocktails at Eggshells. Yes. And then we had lunch, right? And at now, Cheers. yes, we love Cheers. It's We're right staying in the street. hood over yeah, here. Yeah, exactly. We don't go far. So, tell us about yourself. Like, okay, what so is happening? What's our, your elevator pitch? And then I want to talk all uh, about the all this. Elevator pitch for the books or the elevator you, pitch for you. you? Okay. So, I am a native Arkansan. I uh, lived away for a really long time. I've been a writer the whole time, and we came back to Little Rock about five years ago. And I'm a writer, and I make some YouTube videos about creativity and some about writing and then some just about clothes. Yeah. Yeah. So you're like, you're a writer and a YouTuber. I'm a writer and a YouTuber and a mom. And a mom. And those are really, that takes up pretty much all the time. I'm sure. And um, you like bourbon, the brown booze is what we call it. I love bourbon. Cheers. So we made a mint julep tonight, which I know you haven't even had a chance to taste. And if it's terrible, it's okay. We'll pour you a glass of wine and move on. It's yeah. bourbon and sugar. I'll be happy. I know. I know. Right? I, know. I know. So it is really tasty. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> I it love is a bourbon good. drink. And the, gla- the icy I know. glass. Y'all can't. I know. It's like all icy. These so these are my mom's mint julep glasses. Isn't that funny? Like, yeah, I'm like, mom oh. has made such a presence in our podcast. <laughs> she, she has, mom. I know. I love uh-huh, it. Uh-huh. Yeah. That is funny. Both are these, the absolute ads were my mom's collection. <gasps> I love that. They're <laughs> cool. so great. Yeah. They're fun. I mean, they're yeah. all from like the 80s and 90s. Yeah. It's crazy. And the shakers. I have that to kill a mockingbird. Book. Oh, it's um, fun, isn't it? Well, yeah. I mean, what do because you give a writer? writer. Yeah. Yeah. Who likes to drink? Yeah. yeah. It makes sense. <laughs> yeah. It makes sense. Okay. So I'm, I'm eyeing this book. Okay. Here. So this is your current this book. I know you're working on another one. Mm-hmm. So I mean, this, how pretty is it? I love so the pink. pretty. Okay. So I, first of all, should I pitch it? Yes, yeah. Go okay. for it. So this book is called Lifestyles of Gods and Monsters, and it's a retelling of the Minotaur myth with a reality TV setting. Mm -hmm. And so you take all the things from mythology, but it's set in this, like, it's like now, but like five minutes from now Mm -hmm. kind of a world. And it's a very heightened world. And what we're pitching it as, I... It's not on the cover of this, but on the cover of the French edition, Mm -hmm. I could tell you what the pitch is, which is... It's um, keeping up with the Kardashians meets the Hunger Games. It totally is. I'm, t- I'm currently yeah. reading it, and that's that's what makes me think. Like it makes me think of that that perfect. That's like, kind of mm-hmm. like the whole pitch. I and love so that. So the the company that put it out in French for the French translation, they also published the Hunger Games in <gasps> French. Uh-huh. So the cover in French, if you Google it, uh-huh. which called it's called Myth Mythos Story in uh-huh. French, but it's called Mythos Story in French. It says. Hunger Games, Shayla Grex. Oh, that's <laughs> so which I cool. wish this one said that. Hunger Games. They right. Just, they just need to make some stickers. Like, exactly. And like, <laughs> There's probably some sort of like reason it can't be on the book oh, in, yeah, because, in the U.S. Because yeah. in the U.S. Hunger Games is uh, published Trademark. by Scholastic. Oh, and my book oh. is called, published by Macmillan. Gotcha. Okay. So it's not French. the same publisher. In but in French, they have the same publisher. That's, that's funny. So it's a... Um, Young adult book? Young adult book with yeah. heavy crossover appeal. Like, mm-hmm. adults don't be afraid of it. Like oh, I'm not afraid much. of a young adult book. Yeah. Uh, listen, this 43 year old's really <laughs> enjoying the book. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and so then I can also tell you about the cover if you want. Yes. Yes. So, for people listening, um, the cover has a picture of a girl that's a statue that looks like a Greek statue holding a bone. And if you buy the copy in hardback, if you look at the back, Oh, that's so. Oh, nice. That's really back, cool. That is so cool. Book. Look and at her. So, 
I know. I love it. So how did they do? Did okay, it's so cool. Mm-hmm. So the first thing they sent was the thing about traditional publishing, which this is, is you have almost no control of your cover. Yeah, like your I've cover heard that. Is just oh really? They mm-hmm. hire people to do. Your, you just hope you like your cover. Yeah, yeah. and thankfully I've heard that. I did. And mm-hmm. so they sent us this picture, and it was a picture of a girl on a plinth uh-huh. with a phone, and we're like. I don't know. And they said, no, 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 no. So they hired a model for this thing. Mm-hmm. Like they In New York, they hired a model and everything. They sent that picture to a digital artist. The digital artist changed that picture into a statue, which is oh, this one here. That's very that cool. And then so cool. the cover designer decided, so there's a neon mm-hmm. order. And the cover designer, because these people are incredible, designers are incredible, the light on her, like they oh, made it glow, made like it it's glow like a glow on the oh, statue. So yeah. she's like actually sitting in if there. You look, if you go into it in Photoshop um, or in in Designer, whatever they built it in mm-hmm. both, <laughs> you can see like that's another layer. Like oh, that's so cool. So, so cool. So if you like move, like if I crop it for mm-hmm. an ad or something, I have to kind of take it into here because otherwise you have the neon. I yeah. love it. So. Um, anyway, so that was really, really fun. That is so awesome. Process. So this was your first book. I have a book I self-published in 2011. Okay. Which is called Life, Motherhood, and the Pursuit of the Perfect Handbag. Okay. Oh. And it is a straight-up chiclet pink cover. You can still buy it on Amazon. Yeah, available. yeah, yeah. Um, pink cover story about a woman um, with two small bit kids who works designing handbags at a handbag company. And her company gets acquired by a... Oh, that's fun. She so fun. And so she has to figure out, like, all of a sudden she loses her Fridays off and she's in a really corporate environment. She's <laughs> gone from being, like, a the the creative director for a really small company yeah. to all of a sudden being a cog in a wheel of a much bigger machine. Yes. Oh, I'm going to so, have to read that, too. Yeah. That's so fun. And so the whole thing, the pitch of that, which I feel like I was writing it when I was working full-time and had two little kids. Oh, yeah. And I was, we were living in Boston and I was on the train and I was like I'm gonna write a story <laughs> where a lady ends up happy at the end <laughs> so I feel like anytime I see like someone in office clothes yeah. with a baby I'm like here take my card read this book like it was it was made for you I promise it has a that's happy awesome. ending I promise you that's like, so cool what's the difference I'm sorry I'm sorry I want to ask this before I lose it okay what's the difference between like when you decide to self publish versus like how did you get a publishing house to you it's a lot harder. So, <laughs> yeah. so self-publishing is very much like, it's kind of, it's less the Wild West than it was in 2011. But it's still kind of the Wild West. Like, if you decide you want to self-publish a book, you can get the files to the right format, put them up on Amazon, and you'll have a sales page. Yeah. Um, for me, I had worked in marketing when I was working, yeah. so I knew enough to know, like, I need a good cover, or I need, mm-hmm. like, I need all that stuff. And thankfully... Everybody who's a stay-at-home mom, they know there's a mommy mafia of <laughs> people who did all kinds of cool things before they started staying home. Yeah. So yeah. my, when I was working on that book and working on the, so I was writing that book when the kids were four and two, three and one infant, you know, yeah. mm-hmm. I was working, I would work on that book. So when my, one of my kids dropped, I'm not going to say his name because it's a little embarrassing, but when he dropped that midnight feeding, <laughs> I kept pumping, so uh-huh. I milk for work mm-hmm. while I was at work. I was working on this book while I was pumping. Uh-huh. Yeah. Like, sitting there. It's like midnight. I'm sitting there. I'm like, she's got to have a happy ending. She's got to have a, you know, like, so, um, so I worked on that book for, like, six years because yeah. mm-hmm. I was only working on it in the evenings and just, like. Yeah. And then we moved to Chapel Hill, North Carolina, and I was, we were living in Boston at the time mm-hmm. when I first wrote it, and I was able to stop working but then my kids were in preschool so I could only work yeah. during that like three hours a day right until 11 a.m right until like 11 a.m when they're like oh the door's closed take yeah. them home and you're yeah. like um, can you keep them just a little, a little bit longer, longer? Yeah. charging you by the minute exactly mm-hmm. we're charging you by the minute and um and so I totally planned to have that book come out with a major mm-hmm. publisher like that mm-hmm. was always my goal I was not one of those people whose goal was to self-publish I yeah. really wanted to have a publisher what happened was the financial crisis. Mm-hmm. So I finished that book, 2008. Well, I started trying to s- pitch it to agents, which is how you do it, is with yeah. a letter agent. Mm-hmm. And they're like, it's fun, it's great. 
well, you can't sell it. Like, yeah. no one was buying a book with a pink cover uh, after the what? financial crisis. I know. That's what I'm I like, that would grab me in 100%. I, like, mm-hmm. I know who wants to read this book. They were like, oh, there's not a market for it. I was like, I know the market for this. <laughs> like, I know. So, for self-publishing, for anybody who's curious, if yes. you know the market for something, if you know down to your bones, like, this is who wants this book, mm-hmm. like, that's a great yeah. opportunity to self-publish. You, you, you or have, if you have an existing really big audience really on big social audience. and you can promote it to right. them. So what I did was I hired a Mommy Mafia friend who's a graphic mm-hmm. designer to do mm-hmm. the cover. I hired mm-hmm. another Mommy Mafia friend who's a web designer to do the website. And so mm-hmm. for both of them, at that point, our older kids were kindergarten. So they were just starting to ramp back up. So it was like perfect timing because they got a portfolio. And I think I paid them each like three or four hundred dollars. Like, yeah. Which yeah. was a lot of money to us at the yeah, time. Sure. But was like let them get a portfolio item. Let me yeah, right, and get really quality in it. work. Mm-hmm. And then I knew enough to do the layout and everything. For yeah. The, and I knew enough to do the metadata, all yeah. that stuff, for put, which is was not hard in 2011. Yeah. yeah. In 2011, when you self-published something, there wasn't that much else going on. So really? that book sold 4,000 copies. In That's like the amazing. That's amazing. Like, couple years. Uh-huh. Now, it's sold not very much at all since then because mm-hmm. self-publishing is very much a model of like yeah you write you write and publish a lot and i'm yeah. slow I just yeah am it's okay at this point like but um but people still buy it and it's still that's here for amazing people. so i i have a self-published book okay. as well and so we joke about my husband and i joke about it. i'm like oh did amazon pay us three dollars this quarter like, uh, uh, like it's like a, it's like a, a direct deposit yeah. into our account like, and then at the end of the year i get like this you know tax statement i'm like why are they even bothering yeah <laughs> here's what i love them you have Writing income, so you can deduct writing expenses. <laughs> oh, I deduct everything. Lots of things are writing expenses. Yes, they are. Oh, yeah. oh yes. You can well, go down there list. Was a You can Supreme buy glasses Court, that you yes. can write on. Yeah. You can. You're, there was a Supreme Court case in the back in the day with um, Arthur Miller mm. about travel. Mm-hmm. And the idea is an author does not have to say whether or not their travel directly connects to any <gasps> book that hmm. they wrote. I got some, I got some stuff so to hello. add to my taxes Bravo. this year. Hello, hello Emily. Um, I probably need to hire an accountant at some yeah. point because this Arthur. is getting a little complicated. <laughs> but So uh, anyway, the whole point is that that book came out. And so to answer your question a long way around, <laughs> I'm sorry, podcast listeners. <laughs> um, no, they're going to find that fascinating. That's yeah. interesting. So when I self-published that book, I was totally intending, like, okay. It, that was the beginning days of self-publishing. Yeah. 2011, 2012, people were making a lot of money. I was like, I, I can totally do this. Well, we had just had another baby. We just <laughs> had our third kid. Here we go. And Pumping I again was and like, well, I was at least able to stay home. And then I, yeah. In fact, that child only ever had a bottle of apple juice because I hated the pump so much uh. that when he was born, I was like, I'm not doing it. And he was... I was working from home. I was at home. He didn't go to any care. Uh-huh. So I was like, uh, yeah, you, if I left him with anybody, I was like, there's some apple juice. Cause stop it. I totally did. I did. That's awesome. I was like, here's a bottle of apple juice. He'll be fine for the two hours. If he's that thirsty, I'm give him apple juice. <laughs> and then, but at the, I was just like, oh, I can't. So that, at that point I had a six year old, a four year old and a new baby. Oh my gosh. And I was like, I can't Yeah. I churn. Like I can't churn that fast. And I, it turns out did not love the, I like marketing. I did mm-hmm. marketing. I love the social media parts of selling books. I don't like the ads. Yeah. I don't like the back end side. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, no, I really want to have a traditional publisher. And also, I yeah. wanted a hardback, like um, paperback, like, a, mm-hmm. and I wanted like this. This is offset printed, which it's means pretty. like it came from the printer. I love the pink. Oh yeah, that's got nice. This beautiful cover and like. Because it came out from um, Macmillan, which is one of the big five publishing houses, I had a publicist. So, yeah. like, it got featured in Cosmopolitan. That's awesome. Yeah, that is um, so cool. Like, that step, you just Have you, you sh- can't do that on your own. Like, when, did that, when did the book come out? Fall of 2019 for the... So, it's fairly new. I mean... Yeah, uh-huh. so the hardback came out fall of 2019. The mm-hmm. paperback came out 2020. So, how many agents did you have to pitch? Hundreds. I was gonna say I know you know the number. Hundreds. You gotta know it. Hundreds. Really? And I pitched over multiple books. So 
Yeah. I had a thriller that I wrote a long time ago. That so I do, you, do you pitch it before you write it or after? Yeah. No, for finish. fiction, yeah. For nonfiction, you can pitch it before you write it. Yeah, you can do a book non-fiction proposal. Nonfiction writers, ah. mm-hmm. you lucky people. Yeah. Yeah. Fiction has to be finished. So... So, so you know, you watched younger. You don't remember those stacks and stacks of books. I love that. So but you know, that's that's what they did. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I had a a thriller I wrote that I didn't get an agent for and put aside. I had the life, motherhood, and the pursuit of the perfect handbag, which I self published. Then I wrote because of little kids. I wrote a middle grade novel, which for people who don't know, middle grade isn't middle school. It's like eight to ten year olds. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It didn't sell. Like it was just like it was a funky. T- there's always this market stuff that happens where if you're like, if you read about it in a magazine, you're too late. Oh, Because gotcha, books gotcha. sell two years before. So yeah. I wrote a book about a girl with magic powers. Right. I love magic powers. I do too. They're my <laughs> favorite. So I wrote a book about a girl with magic powers right when the market got completely saturated with girls with magic powers. Oh, yeah. And so they're like, yeah, we... Seen that. Uh, seen that. Uh, yeah. I know. And so... I went but I've the always hole. loved magic powers. I was, <laughs> magic, power. I was yes. magic powers. I was born with magic powers. Um, <laughs> the so then this is what's so funny. So I went through that whole process. I queried that book, which is what you call that letters you send. They're called mm-hmm. query letters, and they basically have three things: who are, what's the book? So that's just the pitch. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's the classic like marketing stuff, like. What's the book? What's the market for it? Where mm-hmm. does it fit in the marketplace? And you have to know the answer to that question. Like, where yeah. would it be shelved in the bookstore? That's the question to ask yourself. Are you having an in-person pitch, or is this like no, a... it's in a letter. This is your letter. Oh, God. Paragraph one is, uh, I'm writing to offer you, to ask you to offer me representation for my book, da-da-da-da-da, a mm-hmm. 75,000-word, where it would be in the bookstore. Then you say a little bit about the book, which is, I found out later... The copy that I wrote in my ends up right there. Query letter. That's interesting. Is right here. This sixteen-year-old Ariadne's whole life is curated and shared with the world. <laughs> That's from my query letter. That's wow. so funny. Yeah. Because you know the book best. To win means endless do- glory. To lose means death in ten seasons. You know, so the story, won. like um, J.K. Rowling, was rejected what hundreds, hundreds of, of times, times. Really? Hundreds, hundreds of, times of times for Harry Potter. Yeah, for Harry Potter. For, for Harry, Harry Potter, Potter, people were like, "Who would want to read about a wizard school?" Yeah, I mean, this is, <gasps> so that's like a common yeah. story when it comes to authors and writers. Like people think, "Oh, I can write a book and I'll just go get an agent and publish yeah. it, and it'll be great." And it's like, so, no. So what's so crazy is so I so here's. All right, so I was like, after that middle grade thing, which was called The Last Changeling, and I would love for that book to come out because got magic powers, like chubby oh. girl who loves to sing with magic powers. <laughs> like, come on, pay ball. Make it a book. <laughs> um, I was like, I don't know if I can do this anymore. Like, we were <laughs> it's like, a lot of rejection. Like, it's a lot of rejection. It's got to be hard. It's a lot yeah. of rejection. And then I had this idea that was the first chapter of this book. Um, I was in the supermarket checkout line, and I was looking at, like, the pictures of the – Star and the Inquirer, and they yeah. all had Kardashians on them. I was like, what are these people like? Like, they don't sing, they don't dance. Yes, what do they they're do? They're famous for being famous. They well, have big butts. And have and sex and with people. people. Yeah. yeah. That's what they're famous for. Who they had sex with? Because they that all started with yeah. Kim's yes. sex tape. Oh, yeah. We didn't the, know who she was until she had sex. Did right. I the, it was the blowjob. I mean, it was yeah. the. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, who who is that like? And I was like, oh, Greek mythology. Mm-hmm. That's who that's like. <laughs> because all these. Not the heroes or the gods, but all these women Mm -hmm. are basically famous for the fact that some dude chased them down. Mm -hmm. And I was like, huh. And then that made me think. I just had that moment where y'all, if you were a kid who geeked out about mythology, which I totally was. You know about, like, Leda and the swan and Europa and the bull and, like, Daphne being turned into a tree. And I was like, wait, who saw that? Like, mm-hmm. who told that story? Like, who would you be like, oh, what just happened over there? <laughs> and then I had the image of the paparazzi yeah. with yeah. the people in myth. And that's where the book came that's from. That's amazing. So I, like, wrote the first You, like, chapter. leave your buggy and you're like, oh, my God, I have an idea. Exactly. <laughs> I was, exactly. I was like, I, I got to go. I, I, I know I checked out. I just thought about it. And then I was like, wait. And then I had, like, but this first chapter of the book, like, if y'all read Lifestyles, mm-hmm. like, that first chapter is is the first chapter like that has been that's the, the first, first thing chapter. you wrote that's the first thing i wrote that's awesome. i didn't even know who was telling it i was like 
this first line, you'll have seen them, I suppose, the grainy pictures taken with a long telephoto lens. It's been 14 years, but they still shock. Mm -hmm. Like, I wrote that right then, like, got home, did the thing, you know, yeah. put the groceries <laughs> yeah. away, I wrote that. And I was like, who is telling this story? And mm -hmm. it's a story about Pasiphae and the bull. And I was like, well, who would be close enough to have it impact them, but not, you know, it has to be Ariadne, who's her daughter, who's the one that ends up with the death of the Minotaur, which just made me think like, oh, crap, the Minotaur's her brother, mm -hmm. <laughs> which was like, is a big part of the book. So yeah. you don't have to know Greek mythology to no, like get into the book, because I do all. not know Greek no, mythology, no. Like, I and I'm totally into it. I wrote it, like, where we will have zero knowledge. Yeah. In fact, I, I was hoping for a lot of readers that do have no knowledge because um, I thought they would, in a way, have more fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. they would be like, oh, wait, what? And yeah. then they can go back and look at Wikipedia and be like, oh, oh that's this like, is 3,000 yeah. years old. Like, that's this cool. is nuts. So the whole thing is that, anyway, so I had that idea. And then I was like, this seems like something that could sell. So yeah. I queried again and, and that one went a lot faster yeah. mm -hmm. the whole thing went a lot faster well, um, so one of the things that tickles me is I'm actually listening to the audiobook, which okay. is fantastic. And um, it, I, t I get tickled every time they say, oh, my gods. And, um, <laughs> oh, Hades, no. I like, <laughs> get real tickled every time that happens. I was like, that's such great language, you know. It's really fun. Like, the whole thing, well, it was funny, too, because oh, Hades, no. since it's, um, there's no, I didn't put any cursing in the book. Partially because it's young adult, but mm -hmm. partially because... I couldn't figure out like what in they that would world say. I was setting, like what they yeah, would say. Yeah, yeah. Like, the thing I love that. that though. <laughs> so yeah, so they say, "Oh my God!" So I say, "Oh gods!" Or uh -huh. hey, yeah. So that was really fun, and then it was really fun to set up. Like it's a very modern world. Like it's a very like cars, and so we had to decide. Like they have phones, but are they iPhones? No, they're just we just call them just yeah. phones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's that was so really fun. fun. Yeah, um, that's really cool. So have you? Um, gone anywhere locally to do like book signings yeah or? we had a humdinger party at wordsworth did mm -hmm. you when it, almost all of this book was written at boulevard bread and then the <laughs> window tables i um, love that and so I probably walk by with, you oh i'm mm -hmm. sure <laughs> like everybody i mean there's like a little window table yep. and i went there almost every day like i felt like like when they when they when it sold i was like guys my book sold they're like yay like, like, <laughs> bring so, some of my coffee please so when or we Hawaii. um did the book we did a signing at Wordsworth and there was like a huge crowd it was great and then we did a party afterwards at Boulevard in the Fun. party room yes. and so that was really that's so awesome. Little Rock has a great like bevy of local writers it like really writers does. that you know I mean and Wordsworth is such a great supporter of that yeah. I mean I think that's a really cool aspect of living here because you just wouldn't think that right no that there would be yeah there's a mm -hmm. bunch of them and then there's a bunch like there's a thing tomorrow for a white author that I didn't even know about. And turns mm -hmm. out her book is going to be made a Netflix show. Yes. What? I can't think of her name, but I'm going to go Alaya. by there and pick up her book as well. Cause it looks fantastic. It looks fantastic. It's like mm -hmm. a, um, it's got dark academia and like African mythology mm -hmm. and like all this. Other and this cool isn't stuff. her first book either. It's her first, it is her first, her first book. book. I thought I looked and it wasn't, but maybe Netflix already. Yeah. 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 Wow. It, that was announced um, last week. Yeah, so um, so it's I'm going cool. to that tomorrow, and but I didn't even know her. I'm like, mm -hmm. wait, how did I? That's yeah. amazing. So, yeah, um, yeah. No, we have a great like. There's a bunch of writers, and there's a bunch of like. Um, I don't know if anybody knows about if your listeners know about National Novel Writing Month. There's mm -hmm. a thing called Nano Rimo, which is National Novel Writing Month. <laughs> And you're trying to write a novel in a month. And it's for everybody who's oh been God. thinking, well, the idea is if you just write, like, 500 words a day every day for November, at the end of it, you'll have oh, wow, something. Yeah. But there's, like, a mm -hmm. really great website. Everything's free. And you can, like, track your... You can track yeah. your thing. Mm -hmm. But there's also um, chapters in Arkansas. So, like, before I wrote this book, like, I kind of... I had a funny thing, which is I really had a rush. Like, I took the first chapter to a writer's conference, which is a thing writers do where yeah. they get together, in Dallas, and you can pitch editors and agents. And so I pitched this editor, and this is, like, September of, I think it was 2017. Mm -hmm. like September of 2017. I took that first chapter and had submitted it to this editor who was, like, an editor at a big publishing house. Mm -hmm. And he was like, 
I would love to see this whole book, but I need to see it by December 31st. <laughs> and I was like, shit. Oh, shit. Like, I had... Children, do not talk to me. Yeah, I had... Like, <laughs> right. No, literally, I said to my husband, I'm locking I was like, myself everybody's eating takeout mm -hmm. yeah. for a while, and... Mommy we're going to make this happen. Mommy doesn't do anything. Make this happen. Oh, it's a boulevard. Every day. <laughs> <laughs> I just sat there, That's but I walk. used That's all the tools of National Novel Writing Month because it happened to fall, so... Mm -hmm. So I was able to finish the whole first draft and then, you know, do the editing and cleaning up because I wanted to When you do the first draft, draft is, that, is that what the publishing companies want to see versus the whole book? No, they want to see the whole book. Oh, they want yeah. to I mean, see the first draft is the whole book, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, the first draft oh, is the I see whole book, and go and but like, the okay, first draft is like, I will changes. say, though, mm -hmm. I will say. I watch TV. In the first draft <laughs> of this book, I knew that I didn't have the ending right. But I knew that I had it as good as I could get it. Yeah. And my hope was that someone would buy it and help edit help it. Help edit it and help figure out like how to end it. And they did. I think they I I think we collaboratively did yeah. a great job. But like when I turned it in I was like, I know the ending is not Yeah. Good enough. Yeah. But I knew the first parts were really solid and I was just hopeful. Oh my gosh. That's gotta be so stressful. I mean it's the wildest thing because here's the other thing. So once you get an agent, that doesn't mean you have a book deal mm -hmm. because your agent takes that whole package that you send to him or her, and then they take it to editors in New York, which is I think in Younger she's an editor, right? I don't she's know. I just a, know yeah. she gets like stacks and stacks of books. She's a. Um, I actually thought it was a publishing house, but yeah, I, yeah. yeah. She's because a book they have editor it, in mm -hmm. a publishing house. Uh -huh. So these book editors like editor. in the publishing house, <laughs> they get these stacks. Of, like my editor told me that she. It was emailed. She read it on her phone while she was getting her nails done. I mean, I don't, they do I, all their reading like mm -hmm. on digitally. The weekend. Yeah. I mean, I'm not a reader, and I'm like, what the? F I read yeah. books on my phone. Are you a reader too? I do, yeah. yeah. Okay. No, yeah, but I mean, totally. like, just like that job being uh -huh. the person that's getting like. I would like, love for my job to be to be a reader. I, that would make me like the happiest I person in the world. It, I think really exhausting because they're having to. Here's the thing that's so crazy about that business. They're having to make decisions based on like. Not only do I like it, do I think it'll sell? Like, is it marketable? Do we yeah. have enough money if we get in a bidding war to win against another publishing house? And so sometimes they'll. So, like, if they say they don't have, then they're like, okay, we're done. Yeah, though. That, like, if it's well, really, really good, somebody else might want it. Your best case and they, mm -hmm. is that, as a writer, your best case is that it go to auction. Mine did not go to auction, but oh, I'm hopeful that some so much. future book of mine hopefully <laughs> will go to auction because that is like your dream the creme situation. De la creme. Because then people will do, like, they'll do, like, a preempt. You know, you read about it. There's, like, there's... Yeah. The Netflix business, calls. <laughs> yeah. There's business pages all about this. They're, like, yeah. oh, blah, 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 did a seven a low seven-figure preempt. Oh, my which God. Which is basically saying, like, <laughs> we'll pay you. Don't take it to auction. We'll just pay you because they're afraid it'll go higher. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's crazy. that I None of that happened for me. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like I'm... You're close. Could. I, I mean, could. gosh. Oh, but I do have a really cool thing that's happening that uh, I don't think I have told you guys about when we had lunch. What, what is, is it? It's very exciting. <gasps> so I, do, early in the pandemic, I could not write new stuff. Like, I, I was totally stalled. So mm -hmm. I was like, I want to write because I, I, if for no other reason, I'm happier if I'm writing. Like, if mm -hmm. I'm not writing, everybody in my house is yeah. like, you need to be writing. <laughs> yeah. Go yeah. write something. You're driving us all crazy. So it's like, I love TV. And I thought it'd be really, and I would think this book would make her really great. Yes. So, and it does have an agent in LA, but she took it around and nobody bought it. So mm -hmm. I was like, damn it. Well, I know. Um, I thought, well, I could write what's called a pilot, which is the a first screenplay? episode of a show. A mm -hmm. pilot is the screenplay that's the first episode of the show. So I was like, I can write a pilot. I'll figure it out. Like, I do a bunch of reading and watch a bunch of TV. Which is fun. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Watch a bunch of TV. And then I wrote a pilot and sent it to my agent. And she's like, well, that really doesn't change things yeah. with the agent we have in L.A. Because she already took it around. But she's like, you can start entering in a contest and stuff. So I entered it in oh, a contest nice. for the Austin Film Festival. Uh -huh. And it made it to the second round of the Austin Film What's Festival. Up? So Congratulations. I to the Austin Film Festival. That's and amazing. At the end of So is October. the competition for a pilot script? Mm -hmm. Okay, so, and then will the winner get made? Is that no, kind of, okay? No, and, and I didn't It's just more like a writing competition. Round. Okay. I made it to the, there's called the second round. But it means there's like a bunch of things I'll get to do at this film festival. Yeah. That I wouldn't get to do otherwise. 
contacts because probably of the, as well too. Yeah, and contacts and all that stuff. And so oh when gosh, I was talking exciting. to the people at the festival about like, and I got a really discounted ticket, mm-hmm. and I have an aunt that lives there, so I just mm-hmm. stay with her. Um, and Austin's a fun it? place. Aust- it's like October twenty. 20- something through the 25th through the 28th or something okay, that's awesome coming up. so i'll go and like but i was talking to the people at the festival and they're like oh make sure to bring your book because everybody in tv right now wants to buy what people call ip yeah mm-hmm. which is intellectual property so they're like you have intellectual property and i was like yeah. that i made myself but okay like oh yeah. girl that's so, exciting um, are you going by yourself are you going by yourself heck yes nice <laughs> i love i would always rather if I'm in a situation like that, I would always rather be. You don't want to have to like. Yeah, because I don't want to have to make sure someone's make being sure okay. somebody else is happy when like the I totally whole agree. reason I totally to be there agree. is for me to like <laughs> talk to strangers. Yeah. No. And, I, I, and yes. if I can just put my like, you know, do the do the puppy. Yeah. Did y'all do y'all watch Ted Lasso? Yes. Oh, yes. Of course. The Rebecca thing where the. Oh. Where she's like, where she's like roars thing, or whatever. Yeah. Oh, so she's like, so great. Oh, God, I love her. We're about but to. I'm like, I got to do my like. Okay. Um, I'm so stoked about Austin. I've never, I've only been to Austin one time. And I was so sick when I went. I mean, I was, oh, no. my sister's, it was my sister's bachelorette party. I literally <laughs> was like, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there. But I had like the worst cold. And I was like. I had fun, but I was kind of right. miserable. Austin's like, amazing. So I went to South by Southwest for years, yeah. and which is like insane, right. insane. Yeah. Like I don't even want to experience Austin that way anymore. <laughs> I think next time I go to Austin, I want it to be like you it's know, cool, like, like chill. Like so go to the I went to grad school there, so I lived there for oh. two years. So, um, but I'm so pretty very excited to go. I, if they're so, did you go to UT? I did. I went. I have a master's in English literature, mm-hmm. which doesn't even make any sense because I never wanted to teach it. <laughs> But it was funded, mm-hmm. and I didn't. I yeah. wasn't ready to get a real job. I mean, I was when working a series of real jobs. Like I was a newspaper reporter here. Mm-hmm. At, well, actually, I was a news clerk at the Democrat Gazette, and then I was okay. a newspaper reporter in Mississippi. And the thing about writing degrees, like getting an MFA, mm-hmm. is you have to pay them. You're right. But if uh, you go and get a master's in English literature as part of PhD program, they pay you. Because so they I want got, you to teach. Because they want wow, you to teach. Okay. So I got paid to live in Austin and read books. <laughs> For me, that was like a Bonus. winner, winner, chicken dinner situation. Yeah, that sounds amazing. Um, so I lived in Austin for two years. And then when I really realized, like, I did not want to be a college professor. Yeah. And... I was dating my husband, and he was leaving for Boston to go to like, medical school. Peace out. I was like, peace out. Although, I am still technically on a leave of absence. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, did you now, meet your husband in Austin? No, I met my husband at a waterside party at Burns Park. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Must That's pretty out. great. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, I moved home after, right after I graduated from college, and I worked at Wordsworth. Uh-huh. Awesome. And I... Uh, my cousin, I was living with my cousin in Conway. She was a student at Hendrix. I had graduated. I was selling books. I'm sure my parents were so pleased. Like, we sent you away to college and you're selling yeah. books. Um, and she was like, hey, she was working as a lifeguard. She's like, hey, you should really come to this party at the water slide. And I was like, no, you're going to get so drunk and leave me standing around like an asshole. I'm not doing that. And she's like, no, no, no. But I have a friend that will be there. And then uh, uh-huh. that was my husband. That That's is awesome. So funny. And she totally did. She left you? Both of us. He came because she asked him. I think maybe he thought she was just interested. Uh, uh, and then uh, she got so hammered. And they were doing, like, that thing where you block the water. Uh-huh. And, like, and so he and I, what? you can, like, block the water for a while. And then the water like, side goes super fast. Like, you, it's the whole thing. Okay. And so water it was slide starting tips. to look right. like there might be some serious injuries. So my... Now, husband and I, the two of us together, just stood outside in the parking lot in <laughs> Burns Park by the parking lot. <laughs> to by distance the yourselves. Side, to distance ourselves from any horrible injuries and <sighs> talk for hours. He's a, he is also a um, physician, too. Yes, he is. But like, he wasn't at that time. I know, but I'm like, he's a board. Like, that's <laughs> yeah. exactly what a physician would do, right? <laughs> uh, he was still, he's younger than I am, so he was 19. Oh, oh my God. So I was 22, he was 19. So we nice. just stood outside and talked, and then um, basically, he's like, favorite person to talk to ever and that just so yes oh, so, okay. awesome. so was he in austin too for a year of it okay he was like his like he graduated and then he applied to med school while living in austin okay, okay. and that's then awesome. um and then when he had the chance to go to boston i was like yeah 
going. So we got married. <laughs> okay, so listen. <laughs> okay. When we had lunch, you mentioned... Oh, well, we had lunch because... You had mentioned that you were going to do a new book. I am. So and I want to hear about it because... All right. So I'm writing a new book. It's a mystery. It's set in Hot Springs, Arkansas, It is, which is the coolest town. Yeah. If you want to know about history yeah. and mysteries. There's a lot. All, there's a lot. And so it's a... Um, it's a mystery. It's set in Hot Springs. It's a girl who's 22 who uncovers a family mystery that her mom was involved with back in 1986. So it'll have two timelines. One in the present Love and Love one it. back in 1986. And um, it, also, she has a podcast, which is why yes. I asked mm-hmm. to go to lunch because my main character and her best friend have a podcast together. And so I was like, I have to hear all about the podcast. I know. I was so, like, we were meant to, meant to meet. Meant to meet. Exactly. <laughs> I was like, wait, I heard they had a podcast. I was like, oh, wait, I have so <laughs> many questions. It's like, um, technical questions, actually. Like, who runs the microphones? Yeah. And um, so, yes, yeah, so I'm working on it now, but it's early, early, early days. Like, just. Yeah. Um, but if anybody wants to hear how it's going, I've been making videos on my YouTube, which is Emily Which Robertson. is what? What is your... What it's is, just Emily Robertson. Okay, that's awesome. Um, and if you go to my website, which is emilyrobertsonbooks.com, you can kind of get to all, all the, the different places. stuff I do. Yeah. I tr- really try to um, keep everything pretty much updated. Yeah. yeah. So, so uh, you know, you asking us about podcasting made me think as I'm as I'm going through Lifestyles book, did you talk to anybody about, like, television production or reality TV production to, like, I know kind of, like, how the camera system not. works I and all that? I read a lot of YouTube. I felt like that was one where I, I think logistically some of the stuff I do with the cameras you probably really can't. Uh-huh. And I sort of fudged with, like, it's near future, you yeah, know? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Um, there's... I mean, we have the thing. My favorite thing about it, if you ever Google about reality TV, is that the truth of it is that everything that's happening, and I did include this, is mm-hmm. two steps beyond it are like 15 big hairy guys with microphones. Yeah. Oh, sure. Like, Would that not be the worst? It's like, so it's, mean, not it's not real. It's not real. And then, like, they're in a restaurant and they're like, okay, let's do that again, guys. Half of the time, this is from my Googling, mm-hmm. a lot of people are obsessive about the Kardashians. A lot of the stuff that you see actually happened, even the fights actually happened like before. before and they said do and it they again. Re- Create it. Create it. That's before. why I don't I don't watch it. I, I really don't watch that stuff. I don't okay, so I have to people ask me all the time, do you watch reality TV? And I will tell you, I love a contest show like Song. I Land, like Top <laughs> Chef. I love the or, Top Chefs and all that stuff. Uh, Vo- the Voice. Runway. Uh, yeah, Project, Project Runway. Runway. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love all that stuff. The Real Housewives and Kardashians thing, I don't watch. But I do love a highlight show. If you do, like, a highlights of... Of, of the whole season. Of the whole yes, season. Yes, I'm all about like, that, too. Kim's yeah. Diamond Falls in the Ocean. Like, <laughs> I'll watch Who that. can find it? Yeah, nobody can find it because it was like a thirty carat diamond that she because lost it's in probably actually Oops. found. Yeah. It's probably yeah. found, and the insurance claim is right. better. Exactly. Right. Right. Sorry, Kim. <laughs> but <laughs> I. But I do. I am totally fascinated by like a makeup video. Yeah. Like Those a are fun. transformation video. Anything mm-hmm. where like. But I think that for me, like I will, I will watch Kylie put makeup on all day long. It, like, it is truly watch a transformation. Her turn. Yeah. And I will say, I'm not going to say that Kylie inspired this. Well, no. Here's what I will say about Kylie and Kendall that they did inspire this book in a way, is the way that they didn't have a choice. Yeah. Like Kim and Chloe and whatever the other, Courtney, they were old enough when that show started yeah. that they could decide. Kylie and Kendall were like Throwing little in. kids. Yeah. And that, to me, that definitely, when you read Ariadne, that mm-hmm. definitely was part of Ariadne to me, is what happens if you're stuck in this life and you don't like it. You have a choice, either. You didn't have a choice, and you hate it, and your whole family's livelihood is, I just hit that, your it's whole okay. family's <laughs> livelihood is dependent yeah. on perpetuating it. Yeah. yeah. Like, what happens when Kendall Jenner is like, I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah, yeah, she doesn't know how to say that because she was raised yeah, to raised believe like, that's what it was. Yeah, that's yeah. what they're supposed to mean, and they capitalized on it. So good for oh, them. Yeah, you know? I mean, and like for Kendall, I actually, I'm clearly showing I know way more about this. But <laughs> well, you should. You've researched she it. She has like t- 
turned herself into a supermodel. At least she was like, you know, I have always wanted she to be a She differentiates herself. She does. Because all the rest of them look a lot alike yeah. and like kind of do the, the same thing. The yeah. other thing I think is so interesting about her, and I actually think it's really interesting about teens, about young people and the ones that manage this stuff well, is that she can say, like, I'm sure there are people who are like, Kendall's only a model because she was a Kardashian Jenner. And the no, answer she's, is like she's she's gorgeous, gorgeous, model. and she's mm-hmm. tall. No. She's like the tallest one yeah. of the whole family. Like she looks like a model. Oh, totally. And I just hope that she I, doesn't like go into the Kylie not looking like herself self. thing. Yes, that terrifies like, me. About yeah. Kylie, that, but I think what's so interesting to me about Kendall Jenner, it's actually interesting to me about Cindy Crawford's daughter, mm-hmm. is like I feel like those of us who are in our forties. We have all this discomfort about the fact, like, oh, am I here for an unfair reason? Perhaps I should apologize for the fact that I'm, like, (laughs) even here. Like, oh, Mm -hmm. crap, I should be really sorry. And I just feel like those girls are like, I'm here. I do a good job. Deal with it. Deal with it. Like, like they don't even, like, I heard a thing where they were interviewing a few, like, kids of famous people. But some kids, of course, famous people, their kids do better in Hollywood. Because if all of us grew up with people who were, like, you're not going to move to L.A. and try to be in a right. thing. Right. right. But I think you can't argue that, like, Bryce Dallas Howard doesn't do an incredible it's just, job. It's honestly right. kind of the, the rich get richer thing. Yes. Because, I mean, even though, like, the the famous get fam- more famous. But but they do have talent in their own yeah, right. Yeah, they do exactly. have talent in their own but right. They're, but you have to think about it. Like, if you think about it as a job, like, these kids were trained from a very young age and they know it's like a family business yeah it's like, mm-hmm. a, family it's like a family business I mean yeah it's like it's like getting to be the CEO because your dad started the company right. I mean it's or the same selling insurance because your dad sells insurance it sure. just involves more makeup yes although there uh, are some insurance agents but I like this idea of, um, you know, that we are, we are, we do constantly apologize. Like, yeah. that's just kind of how we were brought up to be like, mm-hmm. I'm sorry to ask this again, but can right. you please, you know, right. or whatever it is. I like this idea of saying, I'm here. I'm here. I do a good job. Like, how about you let me. Like, stop apologizing. Oh, like, I love yeah. the stop apologizing. Thing. Yeah. I just feel like there's so many ways that we were raised to feel. I think this is very much like a. For people in their 40s and older, like I totally see it, like I'm mm-hmm. yeah. on stuff. We were totally raised to be like, I'm only here on the sufferance of other people. Yeah. Am I pretty enough to be here? Yeah. Am I mm-hmm. blah 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 enough to be here? And it's like, no, I'm here. Men don't do that shit. No. Men do not ask themselves if they are attractive enough to run a business deal. No. And I just feel like, oh, there's a there's a book I totally love. Okay, Kate, Caitlin Moran. She's mm-hmm. English. So how to build a girl, how, how to, to be famous. A, how to, well, I think it was like how to make a woman. Okay. It's a great audio book. So, that, she okay. Says, so she's had several, so she had how to build a several, girl. How to so, build a girl. So how to make a this woman must be the next one. Okay. Book called, and she said she always asks herself before she does anything, whether it's Botox or anything, <laughs> she always asks herself, is this shit the men do? <laughs> I love and that. She's like, is this shit the men do? And she's like, if it's not... Then I can ask a, myself. Did you like, say that in a British accent? She is British. She's British. British. Yeah. I did kind of like want to do the British. What the men do? And I thought that to me is like incredibly powerful. Like I can get Botox or not, but mm-hmm. I don't need to get Botox to get in the room. No, if men don't hell do no. It. Right? Like I don't need to put. Know. If I want to put lipstick on, I'm gonna put lipstick on. You but put I your lipstick on for yourself. I need to put lipstick on to get in the room if men yeah, don't need to. Right. And I just. That. That's that's a great that's a great kind of like plaque to have in front yeah, of you, exactly. you know, yeah. like as a reminder on your desk like, yeah. before Literally, every decision. I, I will tell you like, and this goes into like uh, my fingernails. I put nail polish on and toenail polish on and lipstick for myself, right. not for anybody else. Oh. Like that makes me happy when I, especially when I see my toes and my nails. I'm like, oh, it's like <laughs> a breather. It's like, oh my god. So I will tell you, I put nail polish on. Well. I let people put nail polish on me. Because <laughs> I'm bad yeah. at it. I love it when they do it. Amy has to have readers now. Yeah, I can put <laughs> nail polish on. Um, for years, I did not put nail polish on because we got all that language about, like, you know, you had to choose smart or pretty yeah. when we were mm-hmm. growing up. And, like, 
my sister's pretty, so I got smart. Like, that's kind of like the oh, charge you're terrible. Um, no, people would come up to us and be like, you must be the smart one. <gasps> I, okay, thank you. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It's terrible. I know. Don't do that. <laughs> Never ever. Is your sister do. older or younger? Younger, but a, she was adorable. She was blonde. I was brunette. Like, mm-hmm. so you're so What does your sister do now? She's a psychologist. Okay. She's excellent. That's awesome. That's so interesting. Is she here? So she I think there's like such an interesting dynamic in siblings in yeah. general. Like you've got a sister. I had a brother. Like it's just there's wow, like it's I, like so I can you know I just I think there's a lot of interesting oh, sibling there, dynamics. I, honestly, I swear I've, I've I've said this before, and I'm going to be quick because we have to wrap yeah, it up. Have, but I have by doing hair for so long, I've, I swear, like in in a future self, I honestly, if I wasn't going to be famous, I would. <laughs> Be a psychologist. I yes. think it would be so fun. I love, like, especially, love like... talking to her. About, like, um, I'm sure. I love, she like, insight children. Like, I love to... I'm very interested in that yeah. kind of thing. But, um... We but veered I think way that, off of... Yeah. No, no, <laughs> totally. Sorry. But uh-huh. I think that for me, being like, no, I do paint my nails. Because, again, yeah. mm-hmm. the opposite side of that is that there's a whole culture, especially around writing, that for me, this was really important. Actually, I would say this to anyone who wants to write books. <laughs> You have to embrace what you really like. Because yeah. there's a whole lot of people, and this is like the theme of my YouTube, there's a whole lot of people who will stand up and tell you all the reasons why the thing you really like is trash when they don't know what they're talking about. Yeah. Because if you can buy it in a store, there's a market for it. Yeah, somebody. There, Some, it's been through several different layers. Somebody yeah. it. So if you, there's this whole thing where like people are like, oh, only the only writers that matter are the serious writers and you're like uh not so no. much there's some backlash against that yeah. right now oh so, totally yeah. because romance drives the whole freaking industry yeah i mean like if you're yeah. a, a white male writer that's writing a 700 page novel at this point like i, I think there's so much backlash against that you know right. like unless, it's like unless your parents aren't in publishing house. well there's uh, that yeah. yeah but but yeah anyway so that mm-hmm. helps <laughs> yeah so paint your nails Everybody. paint your nails do, actually, actually, actually just do I you i feel like if there's Okay, we have this idea that, like, this is one of the things, like, you look at history and stuff. We have this idea that, like, nail painting and adornment are female and boring-ass... Not anymore. Not anymore. Like, clothes are male. But that's, like, a total cultural thing. Because if you look even back at, like, before 1810... Men wore full faces and makeup. Wigs. 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 That were curled. High heels. Feathers. Like it's the, the peacock thing. Even the whole mm-hmm. thing about like what's yeah masculine and what's feminine is just total baloney. Yeah. And I always felt like when my kids were little, like you could see them want pretty things. Yeah. They're all boys, right? All boys. Yeah. You could see them want pretty things and then the whole culture's like, No, you can't have pretty things. I'm like, what does that do to these little people? I to know. tell them from the time they're like one and a half. It that's kinda, pretty. You almost you wonder if it, it cuts out their creep creativity a little bit you know like, no. like well, well let I a little boy saw, paint their mom's toenails I or fingernails saw the or difference. whatever so we lived in boston and then we lived in chapel hill and then we moved here and in both in boston and in chapel hill there was so much more openness to boys like ad- adornment and creativity like all that stuff like painting yeah. their toenails like I love if it. they wanted to like wear a f- scarf with pink or what yeah and that and it was so interesting to come back here because of course I was raised here so of course I know about all right. of it yeah but to be back in it and be like oh man we just stifle them like I just anyway I know I know, I know I know I know I totally agree it's a whole other podcast okay so <laughs> <laughs> okay so we I would love to know besides your website right what is your Instagram and okay all so that? Um, I'm on Twitter at Robertson Emily if you go on Twitter I actually do Twitter because lots of writers are on there. Yeah. I'm on Instagram. This is so unfortunate. It's Robertson Emily M on Instagram because <laughs> Robertson Emily was not available. Yeah. And Emily Robertson is gets you to everything. It's your gateway. It's my gateway. It's your and gateway. It'll take you to all the things. It'll take you to all the things. I love and it. And on YouTube, I'm just Emily Robertson, I think. So. 
Oh. And your book is available locally at Wordsworth, Words, for sure. And at Barnes & Noble. Uh-huh. And um, everywhere and on ebook. And as Emily said, it's an excellent audiobook read. It really like, is. The reader they hired is an actress, and she's incredible. I, I, I do not narrate this book. I couldn't have narrated it. But yeah, she does, great, I, she does a great. She does a great job. Maria yeah. is because it's like a who can like yeah. I, I she's have to always sample. So good. That's awesome. And they totally nailed like she. She has, changed the, her tone to like go to the different parts. She. Well, they. She does. She does no, a great job. I mean, it's yeah, just yeah. like you can just. It doesn't. She it doesn't. has like what I really wanted is I didn't want anyone with a southern accent because even though I have one, the book is set so right. much in that sort of like. Kardashian, so yeah. she completely nailed that, like, that, that voice of, yeah. like, um, I uh, feel like she high just, pitch. <laughs> no, it's not that, it's that she just totally has that, like, because she's not, she's like the, I mean, the main character is, 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 is not, not, like, in front of the cameras, like, like she she's not playing for the all. cameras. Like, the main character hates it all, mm-hmm. but the narrator just, does this such a great job when she does the sisters, mm-hmm. like, the whole yeah, the whole thing is just incredible. I and the major, there are um, there are three sisters and then um, a brother. That's a secret. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway, yeah, no, it's great. Awesome. It's great. Okay, I'm really well, enjoying it. You should totally yeah check it out. Oh. Life Styles and Puzzle Monsters. <laughs> and I love the back. Yeah. It is. It's so good. It's a great. I love the great uh, design. Yeah, good yeah. story. I love. I, I love that. Um, that you've been successful with that. And yeah, that's, that's so exciting. The whole thing has been such an adventure. And I got to go, like, I did a book signing in New York. Like, it's sold in French. Like, it's all been. I mean, that's big time. Arkansas girls dream of the shit. Big deal. (laughs) Oh, we should hit the applause button. Okay. Okay, well, you can't hear it, but our audience can. (laughs) If we had headphones on, you could hear. (laughs) Thank you so much for being here. This is such a pleasure. Cheers. 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 Cheers.